Okay. Um. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Good. Good afternoon. Good evening to all the participants uh, for this uh, um, webinar on uh, nanotechnology and nanoscience. This is the third conference um, uh, 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 that I that I've uh, attended, and um, I'm one of the community members, and also. Uh, um, a co uh, co uh, technical co -chair chairman for the webinar and also uh, a plenary speaker. And uh, thanks for inviting me uh, uh, to speak at the conference uh, and uh, greatly appreciate all the sponsors. Okay, now uh, my topic is on review of advancement in nanotechnology for use in medical application and, and expectations for the future. So, let me go to the next slide. Uh, just before I go to the next slide, um, the, uh, um, one, the one of the physicists you, uh, in US, physicist named by Richard uh, Feynman, is uh, is the father of nanotechnology in 1959 said there's plenty of room at the bottom so uh, there is still a lot of uh, work going on uh, uh, for different applications uh, and the source is um, yeah, to get uh, to our consumers uh, or to the global market from uh, R&D. Okay. Now, um, I'll be just going over a few uh, overview, uh, uh, sources of nanotechnology, uh, then our history of transistors, uh, what is the technology, uh, nanotech, what's and a technology evolution of multi-level structures, and and then uh, today's history in making, um, which is where uh, I will spend a bit more time. Then discuss some of the nanotechnology and nanoscience for med nanomedicine application. Nanotechnology in medicine and drug delivery, and other um, uh, medical applications current and future challenges, uh, conclusion, and then um, uh, at the end of the uh, webinar, I will uh, 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 hope to get uh, questions answered. Thank you. So application and sources of technology. Now, uh, in environment, we can uh, water, energy, solar, using solar cells, oil spill cleanup um, in consumers uh, for clothing, athletics, electronics, food, medicine. Now, all the previous uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 use is uh, basically it's uh, external use. Now, Food in, in the other way, uh, uh, we have to consume it. Medicine, we have to consume it. And we have to also use uh, other forms of um, uh, um, uh, for example, drug de de delivery, sensing uh, diseases, uh, detection of diseases, nano, uh, uh, nanomedicine using nanoparticles for um, uh, yeah, yeah, looking at um, how we uh, will use it in, uh, in, on consumers or the humans. So history of transistors, uh, yeah, yeah, I just want to show this. Uh, this is basically showing when transistors uh, started in 1947 um, and then eventually uh, we are now in 
2016. You can see from the, uh, there's a growth in the market of, for, for transistors. We went from a very large uh, components to now on, uh, in a form of a nanostructure uh, transistors. Uh, and the cost of um, achieving this has also dramatically reduced. So uh, as, uh, there is a roadmap of, for transistors towards um, getting um, better uh, and better yield and better uh, applications so that we can uh, make the de uh, application devices, for example, compact. Now, from this graph, um, uh, nanotechnology um, is one to 100 nanometer in the past. So um, you can see how uh, in the past it has been 100 nanometers. Now we are going into sub nanometers uh, 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 and using most law, even that is proven to be incorrect because um, uh, uh, we, we are really uh, um, uh, scaling up. Uh, transistor uh, scale has gone from 10,000 uh, to less than 10 nanometers. And, uh, and the contact, uh, contacts also have uh, significantly reduced uh, in, in multi-level uh, um, building of uh, transistors. Now, this is uh, the Evolution of multi-level structures, you can see that it's basically uh, going conventionally scaling. We are now uh, in 2025, uh, but uh, we can see that this particular uh, curve is now going uh, almost stable uh, in terms of development. Um, so now, uh, in terms of the uh, TMC device scaling, we're now 28.88, which is basically 16 nanometers. Um, uh, but we're talking about million uh, uh, transistors per uh, millimeter square uh, compared to a, a, a few uh, in the past. Now, there is uh, different ways of um, actually achieving this transistor. Um, it, it is part of uh, uh, and the understanding for nanotechnology. We used to have a 1D level of uh, uh, structures, uh, but now we are going towards uh, 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 3D structures, stack structures, and so on, so that we can build uh, thin FET and uh, CNT FET, which are basically part of uh, uh, current uh, trends in uh, mobile phones, uh, computers, etc., and also a lot of uh, use in medical applications. So, in the roadmap of transistors, you can see that uh, fit FET, uh, DS FET, and then head hetero uh, fit you can see the levels have uh, significantly uh, uh, increased so that we can achieve um, uh, rather than having on a 1d layer uh, having just a layered uh, device we can actually put many layers of uh, um, material to create different types of devices uh, using uh, a mixture of um, uh, material uh, 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 that was discussed yesterday in the uh, webinar by uh, some of our 
colleagues who presented. Uh, so you can see the stack level. Now, today's making is, uh, history in the making is we are going from 1D to 3D. And uh, last uh, second, uh, we made uh, that was said last year. Um, uh, uh, we uh, heard about names, names by Doug, Dr. Doug Spark uh, present. 3D printing technologies have now significantly uh, given us opportunity to uh, make um, designs of structures more consistently and more reliably, but still there's a need for improvement. Now, the aim of this talk is towards medical application or nanomedicine. Now, and R&D and limitation. Now, Alexander Dutch, medicine, COVID-19, in RNA. Um, in the last four years, um, uh, we have gathered a huge uh, uh, scientific knowledge. When COVID uh, came, and uh, we had to be uh, the, the scientists and the uh, pharmaceutical uh, uh, companies or industry had to be very fast in uh, delivering a solution uh, so that uh, we contain the uh, yeah, disease. And uh, from 1919, sorry, 2019, 2020 now, we have significantly reduced the uh, uh, rate of uh, death and also rate of uh, 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 um, getting the COVID. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. However, still it's ongoing um, and there's plenty of work that's happening to uh, um, uh, reduce it further. Now, E. Olaga. Uh, talked about uh, environment, uh, uh, R. Ferrell and uh, uh, Maria Colaati uh, talked about uh, environment, microplastics, nanoplastic in the second uh, webinar. Uh, yesterday, she talked about um, uh, uh, medicine and its challenges. Uh, Professor Pong on energy harvesting for grids, wireless power transfer is using various materials and uh, structure and morphology uh, by Cuberus. Now, the main, to uh, main aim of my presentation is to look at um, uh, what is nanomedicine and give an overview and what are the health risks and lack of uh, some uh, regulations which are now uh, being implemented so that it's ethical use uh, uh, by consumers. Now, in this diagram here, you can see that we have uh, used, we use nanotechnology in intra, intro or in invo uh, diagnostics um, and medical imaging using in, in vivo then we have nano th th uh, therapy ethics system and devices those are all uh, has to be miniaturized vaccines uh, uh, as i mentioned the nrna that had been developed for covid and then we have also a re uh, regenerative medicine that that and uh, bio uh, materials uh, uh, that is uh, used to um, uh, counteract some of the uh, uh, humans uh, diseases and also uh, uh, reduce the risk of uh, transmission. Uh, nano, uh, in medicine and dr drug delivery is one of the uh, key areas in uh, uh, cons 
consumers uh, today. Uh, yesterday's uh, uh, plenary talk by Professor Maria Colotti, um, uh, she, she gave a, a wonderful overview of um, uh, the uh, safety and health uh, uh, risk uh, and uh, and trying to uh, con uh, trying to put a foundation on uh, improving uh, the use of uh, nano uh, technology for medicine or drug delivery. Um, nanotechnology uh, in medicine uh, is a huge market, uh, medical, uh, pharmaceutical companies are working uh, and researchers from other institutions are working on trying to uh, use the uh, materials and also use the understanding of um, processes uh, to implement new, new technologies that can be used for uh, uh, used by consumers. Now, uh, in medicine and drug delivery, uh, we, we uh, it has been uh, uh, there are many uh, um, industries and uh, pharmaceutical uh, industries that are uh, using nanotechnology to treat cancer, diabetic, stroke, thrombosis, central nervous system tumors, et cetera. And uh, the, not just that, there's many, many other uh, applications in medical uh, field or in medicine. Now I've shown a picture uh, on the right. You can see a nano patch vaccine. Um, so basically uh, this particular uh, nano patch is applied on your uh, arm and basically the device itself uh, would trigger when uh, when there is some type of uh, 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 molecule within the um, uh, body or the skin, and then it will release uh, the uh, uh, source uh, uh, for um, uh, reducing the uh, uh, rate of infection. You have uh, smart bandages, for example, that will that's being used with nanotechnology, where you can heal someone's uh, wound. Someone's wound, um, and uh, and also for sensing uh, applications. Okay, the roadmap on uh, nanomedicine um, can see on the right hand side, uh, we have a diversity of materials that we use. Uh, and in the third slide, I, there is a, a detailed uh, types of uh, nanomati uh, nanotechnologies uh, that are being used non-invasive administration. Uh, so basically we don't want to um, uh, use needles and other factors, uh, reduce uh, uh, the level of need for uh, 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 needles to be used to uh, uh, treat patients. However, uh, you, you can do it using, we want to use it as a non-invasive way. And uh, closed loop based smart delivery. Um, so um, we basically have uh, applications and systems which will uh, uh, deliver um, without the need of uh, uh, injections, some type of uh, um, uh, nano uh, nano medicine uh, that can be uh, applied uh, on uh, taken by a consumer. Now uh, we also see the use in stroke. Uh, 
uh, so blocked arteries, uh, you can use uh, nanomaterials uh, such as liposomes, polymeric nanocarriers, extracellular uh, uh, vessels. Um, they are all uh, different types of um, delivery uh, system. Now, the challenges are comp uh, how do we go from a complex system to uh, uh, understand the uh, complexity of the system, uh, of target effects, lack of, lack of optimal inter, uh, models, and then advanced strategies. How do we go about um, using the efficient nano carrier delivery. Uh, so uh, design on uh, microfluidics, uh, turning the uh, 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 active target ligands and uh, pre-labeling brain uh, endothelial cells. So, What, so what are what are our current challenges and uh, uh, future challenges? Now, na uh, launch of nanotechnology in cancer treatment by uh, National Center Institute in late 2004. Se several similar initiatives has been promoted all over the globe with intention of advancing the diagnosis, treatment prevention uh, using uh, nanoscience and nanotechnology. So in order to achieve this uh, goal of implementing uh, 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 de devices and also uh, for consumers, um, we need to work as uh, uh, one team. The, uh, what I mean is interface between engineering, physics, chemistry, biomedical science, uh, biology to understand uh, the effects and then implement the device. Uh, so the, uh, we are having we are ha having to develop new diagnostic imaging therapeutic uh, 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 nanomodules for clinical development. Um, the roadmap uh, uh, elaborates that development of future and medicine and uh, health and safety consideration is a key element in a use of uh, uh, nanotechnology because there is a, a lot of uh, 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 health and safety factors that have to be resolved. Uh, role geometry and mechanical properties in rational design articulates on interaction of uh, nanomedicine in cells of immune system, exploiting endogenous molecules such as albumin to carry the therapeutic uh, agent, optimal delivery of uh, nucleic acids, uh, diabetics with sustained and controlled release of insulin, stroke for by using uh, thrombolic particles and development of targeted nanoparticles. Pivotal role in the de development um, personalized medicine and the roadmap uh, cannot cover uh, all the massive extent. Uh, technology uh, 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 can be applied in many uh, applications. But uh, we are um, at the present stage uh, uh, looking into uh, more into nanomedicine, trying to um, uh, improve our medical uh, um, fa facilities for uh, consumers and also uh, used by uh, consumers. Uh, not needing to um, uh, go to hospitals or clinics. So, in conclusion, um, I, uh, I would like to uh, I say that I've given an overview of nanotechnology trends. I, I, 
in the, over the last five to 10 years, there's been significant imp uh, uh, research and development and implementation of the technologies. Uh, and and uh, uh, in nanomedicine, uh, safety and risks to well being and environment damage are the factors that we are currently uh, 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 scientists uh, are looking into to uh, reduce because uh, we need to. Uh, take the health and safety consideration for consumers because uh, you do not want to have uh, deaths and so on. Uh, where, where do we see ourselves next five, 10 years? Um, we will see uh, nanotechnology uh, uh, application to be uh, applied in not just in nanomedicine, but in all other technologies. There's going to be a huge uh, understanding of uh, the um, uh, health and safety or risks uh, that, uh, that is associated with nanotechnology and to improve that. And uh, if we can improve that uh, um, he uh, health uh, uh, risk, uh, health and safety aspect of it, um, uh, we will be able to uh, develop further devices that will uh, achieve um, a compact uh, 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 devices for consumers. So is nanotechnology the answer for the needs? Absolutely, because we, we need to uh, miniaturize and we are, uh, we are, uh, uh, we are in, the, um, in the years of uh, technology uh, we have grown to know, understand many technology and many materials in the past to now. Um, we are applying that towards nanotechnology. So uh, that's the talk that um, uh, about an, uh, the advancement in nanotechnology for medical applications and what the expectations are in the coming years. Um, Professor Getsi Hiro uh, and uh, 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 Dr. Uh, 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 Colati uh, uh, basically uh, provided uh, uh, in-depth um, um, uh, discussion, um, uh, uh, in particular health and safety by uh, Professor Colati and then Professor Katsuyut uh, Ro um, on uh, terahertz, use of terahertz uh, um, with nanotechnology. So, and uh, uh, there's others who would have, um, who have presented many other applications, including nanomedicine, and we're going to hear more of this today. So, I'm open for questions now. Uh, 